So I'm here with Cathy Sledge, who uh, just came off stage at the Caribbean Sea Jazz Festival here in Aruba. Uh, it was a phenomenal performance. I think you actually cured my jet lag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you woke me up. I'm free of jet lag now, wow. so thank you for that. You're it was so absolutely amazing. And uh, I want to ask you, first of all, um, you've got quite a big band with you. And uh, I know you've got a couple of family members in the band as well. And I, I just want to ask you about your live setup and your, and your band and how that all came together. Well, it's interesting. Uh, my band, they really are all family. Mm -hmm. My daughter, of course. Um, and she loves music. Her passion's really fashion industry. Um, and then I use the backing vocals, they're a family, and I, because I'm a real stickler for family harmony, um, the McCleary's, mm -hmm. and, um, and then my husband is yeah. our drummer. So it's kind of like family kind of weaves through. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's an underlying message that we, no pun intended, are family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that it's impossible not to notice as well is just the fact that your voice sounds the... Obviously, you have one of the most distinctive voices in soul music, for sure. And uh, it just hasn't changed a bit. It's completely flawless. Wow. Um, I mean, it's absolutely true. Ev everyone is saying the same thing after we've been chatting to them after the gig. But um, I'm just curious, do you have any tips or tricks? My producer here has lost his voice. <laughs> Are you studying too much? <laughs> Working too hard. <laughs> now, you know, I think more than anything, I think if you take care of your instrument, mm -hmm. it should only get better with time. Yeah. I, I, I never, when people say, oh, wow, you still got it. That, that's funny to me because I say, should I have lost that? Yeah. It, but if you don't take care of anything, then you will lose it. But I think in my case, if anything, I've learned to mentally use my voice a lot of different ways. And another thing is I never really, under, I never really, felt like my voice was special. Like people tell me and I'm like, really? But I think you get to a place in your life where you go, okay, it must be kind of special. People <laughs> like it. So I think you get the confidence along with, along with the, um, with the, uh, with the, with the growth yeah. of it. Yeah. And, and that helps. Yeah. That's everything. And um, speaking of distinctive voices, uh, you did a lovely tribute to Aretha Franklin out there. You played two Aretha Thank songs, you. two of my favorites, oh. Respect, and... Um, and uh, Until You Come Back to yeah, Me. Yeah, Until You Come Back to Which Me. Which you know Stevie Wonder track. wrote that song. I didn't know that. Until you come back to Amazing. me. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, when fact. you know that, then when you sing it, you're like, yeah, that is so Stevie. That does, it totally yeah. makes sense. But uh, I just wonder if you, if you had some thoughts to share on Aretha and what she uh, meant to you. It's like what she meant to everyone. Yeah. You know, we always know that eventually we all go home. And we, we, we knew Aretha was battling some things. But when we lost her, I believe there are certain artists and certain people that take a little bit of you with them. And I think Aretha took a little bit from all of us when she left. You really appreciate these amazing artists, these iconic artists when they go. You know, we lost so many this year. Um, I've heard talk that there is a, a film coming out about Sister Sledge based on a yeah. book written by your sister Kim. I just wonder if yes. uh, you had any thoughts on that, if you're in the film at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I will be, unless mm -hmm. they kind of clone me. And <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she, Kim's passion, uh, she wants to write a story through her eyes, which we all have our own story to tell. And I think, it, it, I think she's going to call it Life Song. And um, I wish her the best of luck with that. I'm, I'm actually working on a one woman play about about my family about it's really called lost to music and it's the story of we are family because i think we're all known for we are family but i think somewhere there's we we got kind of lost to music too mm -hmm. and um, it's a real hard strings so yeah yeah so i think everything that we do i'm always happy to keep um, to keep that message going through all different vantage points and that would be Kim's. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Looking forward to seeing that one woman, one woman show. You must bring it to the West End. Thank you. That's <laughs> the idea. We're actually talking to some really um, strong team players in um, in London, in the UK, uh, about eventually ending up in the West End. But I get to tell the story. What's so cool is there's so many artists that are doing that now. I know Bruce Springsteen is doing his. I'm born in the USA. And all of them end up on Broadway, Donna Summers, is on. and I think there's such a story to tell behind We Are Family. Um, yeah, you know, we lost our sister Joni, and I think it's such a heartstring story. 
You know, because here you are, here were these sisters that were kind of catapulted in the, you know, in the middle of everything. And there's a real family there. In fact, really, the song was written about us. So it's, yeah. Someone was describing us to Nile Rogers and the late Bernard Edwards. They're like, you got to meet these girls, they're family. It was actually the then president of Atlantic Records, Jerry Greenberg, and he goes, they flock together like birds of a feather. So Niall and Bernard took out pens and they started writing down the description, which is really a portrait, which are really the lyrics, you know? And so that's really about us. If we had never do anything again in our life, that song to me is everything. And it is what, it represents who we were. And I think it represents what most families feel. Yeah. And, um, and now it just got added here in the United States to the Library of Congress. Amazing. And it doesn't get any better than that. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm happy. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, another one of your biggest hits, which I think is my favorite song of yours, is uh, Thinking of You, which I think you played second to last. Mm -hmm. You uh, introduced it and mentioned it was your favorite too. That is my favorite song. Yeah? <laughs> it's my favorite song. I think um, my favorite part of Thinking of You is the ad lib because it, it was very, um, and I was 16 when I sang that song. But I think, uh, and I know Kim gave me some ideas, you know, she, you know, she gave me that, you, you, you. But it's funny because I love to hear the audience sing along. I love to hear them sing from their heart. And I, I'm seeing all these new generations that come up, like they must have been two years old when I came <laughs> out, but, or maybe not born, probably not even born. But that's crazy to me that it touches everyone the same way. Yeah. Because I think it's um, it was an effortless kind of a song. Yeah, it was very simple. So yeah, I, I love thinking of you. Yeah, me too. and I was absolutely belting it out from the back. P be grateful you couldn't right. hear me. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. That's what we want. <laughs> um, Kathy Sledge, thank you so so much for speaking with us. Thank you. <laughs>